Hello everyone, Jolene here from Bookworm Adventure Girl. Welcome back. And if you are new, thanks for checking out my channel. Please hit subscribe and stick around. Today I am doing a book haul revisit. And today is the first time that I have two years to look back on. I started doing monthly haul videos in October of 2020. So if you take a look back um, at the original videos, which I will link below in the description box, so you can check that out. Um, you will see in 2020, I was filming in my bedroom uh, when we lived in St. Catharines. And then in the 2021 book haul, you will see this library in more of a disarray than it is right now, as I was waiting for bookshelves um, after moving to Calgary. So as usual with the revisit videos, I am going to go through this huge pile of books, uh, the books that I've read, the books that I still want to read, and then I will also let you know about any books that I have kind of fallen off the radar. Um, I have also looked back at last year's revisit, and there are still a few books that I need to get to on that. So I hauled 13 books in 2020 and 11 books in 2021. And out of 24 of these books, I've read 10 of them. I'm reading one right now, and I have one on my TBR for next month for nonfiction November. So that's not too bad. Um, it's about half, which is better than nothing. So I think I will share the books that I've read first, and I will share them from least enjoyed to most enjoyed, starting with Life in the City of Dirty Water, a memoir of healing by Clayton Thomas Mueller. This is not a bad book. It was one of the finalists for Canada Reads this year. And this memoir starts, starts off really strong, sharing Clayton Thomas Mueller's story. It's when it becomes about his activism that the book kind of loses its appeal. Like, don't get me wrong, the work that he has done is amazing. It just as a book loses something when it becomes more about um, sharing his resume than sharing his story. The next book is Wash's Praise by Nurnega, which was the first book that I read that was written in verse. Again, this was okay, but it's not a story that has stayed with me for a long time. Please Look After Mom by Kyung Suk Shin. And this is an interesting story about a woman who goes missing. And it's told from the perspectives of her family members, her husband and her children. And it's a really interesting way to learn about the main character. Rabbit Foot Bill by Helen Humphreys. This book is based on a true story and I thought for sure I was it was going to get a five star rating for me. Uh, the premise of this book is excellent. It's about the friendship between a young boy named Leonard and an outcast named Rabbitfoot Bill whose friendship changes after a murder. Leonard and Rabbitfoot Bill reunite 15 years later and their relationship is very different. And this is actually a sad story and one that I thought could have been better if it was more fleshed out. Still worth a read though. If you are looking for a non-fiction November book, this next one might work for you. This is Golden Boy, A Murder Among the Manhattan Elite by John Glatt. This is another sad story. This is about Thomas Gilbert Jr. who seemed to have everything and was accused of murdering his father. It's also a story of mental illness and how the system uh, lets people down, you know, regardless of how much money they have. These next five books, I rated them all five stars. So on another day, I may put them in a different order, but for today, I am going to start with The Strangers by Katerina Vermet. She has quickly become one of my favorite authors. And this book is a companion uh, novel to her other novel, The Break. And I would say read The Break first before reading this one, but it's fantastic. Next, you're not gonna be surprised this person made the list, <laughs> The Testaments by Margaret Atwood. This is also a sequel, a sequel to The Handmaid's Tale. 
Uh, for me, I loved how Atwood approached this book to continue a story that has, to me, really become part of, you know, pop culture and has in many ways taken on a life of its own, but she still manages to turn everything on its head and make us look at this story in a whole new way. The last three books, uh, I have in many ways the same feelings about them. I remember the stories, I remember the characters, and they are just all books that I still think about. So ranking them is difficult. I think I'm going to start with This Tender Land by William Kent Kruger next. Um, but if you've watched my channel for at least a little while, then you know how much I adore this book. This book, you know, made me want to read more William Kent Kruger, uh, which I have done and I still want to read more. I loved the coming of age story, the fact that the story is about young people. Um, and the thing that I think William Kent Kruger does so well is he writes relationships exceptionally. Uh, so this is definitely an all time favorite for me. Another favorite is The Pull of the Stars by Emma Donahue, who managed to keep my attention while telling a story that takes place in Dublin during the Spanish flu. And the story happens just over three days and takes place on a maternity ward uh, in an understaffed, very understaffed hospital. And this is one of those books where I have said many times that each character had purpose and I loved how this story was told. And that leaves me with my last five star read and that is The Dutch House by Anne Patchett. When I first finished this book, I have to admit that I didn't give it the credit it deserved. It should have been in my top books of 2020 um, because I absolutely loved it. And for whatever reason, I didn't include it. And it is a book that I have thought about a lot. I love the characters and you may already know that I love when authors can have a place as a character, uh, which Patchett does that brilliantly in this story uh, by making the Dutch house a character. I loved how the story was told um, almost in a circular kind of way. And the story itself with the family dynamics uh, is, wonderful. I really can't say enough good things about this book. The book that I am currently reading and will probably finish in the next day or so is Cracked Pots by Heather Tucker. And this is the sequel to Clay Girl, which I absolutely adored. So I'm going to talk more about this when I do my um, monthly wrap up for October in a week or so. Um, I will say that I am not loving this as much as Clay Girl, but I still love Ari, the main character. The other book that I have on my TBR for next month is An Edible History of Humanity by Tom Standage. And this is about how food has affected our cultures socially, economically, and politically. From the books that are left <laughs> that I still need to read, there are nine that I'm actually surprised are still on my TBR because I do want to read them. And although I don't think I will get to all of them by the end of this year, I'm certainly going to try um, and we'll see how many I do get to. Uh, first is Crosshairs by Catherine Hernandez. I read her novel Scarborough uh, this year and I loved it uh, and I have a feeling that I will really enjoy this one as well. Um, Crosshairs, uh, like Scarborough, has quite an array of characters and covers a variety of hot topics. This next book, it's huge. Um, and I could consider this for next month. This is The New Daughters of Africa, edited by Margaret Busby. The only thing keeping me from committing is that it is so huge. Um, I do love the variety of writers, though. Both writers I know and don't know, so I think that I will be in for a treat when I do get to this. I'm also not sure that all of them are nonfiction, so in fairness, it might not be okay for nonfiction November. Um, I think I will stick with nonfiction since this is another book that I am considering for nonfiction November, and that is Maiden Voyages, Magnificent Ocean Liners and the Women Who Traveled and Worked Them, or Worked Aboard uh, Them, by Sean Evans. I think that this is intriguing 
and I really look forward to learning how women's lives changed because of ocean liners, which is not something <laughs> that I really ever drew a link between, so that will be interesting. And this next book, not gonna lie, the cover is what really got my attention with this. And there was also someone on Instagram who highly recommended it, and that is Creatures by Chrissy Van Meter. This is a debut fiction novel about a bride who needs to figure her life out. Uh, since everything seems to be falling apart uh, just the day before her wedding, and uh, that includes the fact that the groom may be missing, so we'll see how this one goes. I have a thriller on the list, and that is The Boy from the Woods by Harlan Coben. This now has a sequel, if I remember correctly, so I need to do some catching up on this one. Um, I've enjoyed other Harlan Coben books, and one or two, I think, other ones. I'm just looking because they're on my shelf here. Um, I pick up his books, and I expect a really fast-paced story with a few twists along the way, so I'm hoping that's what I get here as well. Okay, these next three, oh no, four uh, books I have almost picked up a few times, uh, but for whatever reason, ended up reading something else. But all of these are still books that I do want to check out, and all of them are, you know, fairly quick reads, really. Uh, so I don't know, Bookworm Adventure Girl, like, just needs to get some reading done. Okay, so first is No One Is Coming To Save Us by Stephanie Powell. Uh, Powell Watts, sorry. This is a debut and a retelling of The Great Gatsby using an African-American family and their American dreams. The next one <laughs> is really tiny, as I said. The Union of Synchronized Swimmers by Christina Sandu. And um, this story is like maybe 100 pages. It's the story of six women who make it to the Olympics and they use that experience as an opportunity to find freedom. And this is a book in translation. Um, I believe it's translated from the Finnish. So if you are looking for uh, a book in translation, this might be of interest to you. Next is another quick read. Um, and this is Because Venus Crossed an Alpine Violet on the Day That I Was Born by Mona Hovering. Uh, this is a story about sisters one has a mental illness and the other brings her into the mountains uh, for some time away in the hopes that they can reconnect um, and I don't know if that happens or not we'll see how it goes and then the final book in the category of books that I still want to read is Letters to Amelia by Lindsay Zier Vogel and in this story Grace is a library tech who has been asked to read letters that Amelia Earhart had written to her lover. And while she does this, it helps her with her own recent separation, and then it also inspires her to write her own letters to Amelia. So this leaves me with three more books that unfortunately have kind of fallen, fallen off the radar. They are definitely still on my shelf, but they have slipped down my TBR. So this is just an opportunity to get reacquainted. Um, all three of these books are nonfiction, so they could be contenders for nonfiction November for me. Um, we'll see how that goes. The first is Open Every Window by Jane Munro, uh, which is a memoir that shares the experience of her husband's diagnosis of Alzheimer's and how the two of them dealt with their situation and coped. This next book I think is going to be more of a textbook-like read, um, Gel or Gel versus Canada, um, Challenging Sex Discrimination in the Indian Act by Lynn Gell. This is an analysis of the Indian Act litigation, and my hope is that it will include enough of uh, Gell's story to not be too dry, so we'll see how that goes. And then the final book in my haul revisit is Spilexum, a Weaving of Recovery, Resilience, and Resurgence by Nicola Campbell. This is a story of one woman's journey of overcoming adversity and uh, colonial trauma. The author uses a variety of elements like letters, poetry, and prose to tell her story. So this is definitely something, you know, that does interest me. 
So it's unfortunate that I kind of forgot about it, um, but maybe I can move this up my TBR list now that I have remembered. So that is my book haul revisit for October. Please let me know if you have read any of these. Um, have you read any of the books, especially if they're ones that I haven't read yet? Uh, do you have any recommendations on what I should prioritize? What are your thoughts? I look forward to chatting with you in the comments. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and don't forget to make every day an adventure. Mm -hmm.